Jeremy with Vlogger Educates. Let's get started. Jeremy here with a, another episode of Vlog Sugar Educates. And uh, today I'm going to be going in depth of the actual cost of locking up juveniles versus the alternative of educating them. Uh, juveniles make up for 1,200 of one and a half million people that are housed in federal and state prisons in the states and nearly 200,000 youth enter the adult criminal justice system each year. Most for crimes that are nonviolent. There are still roughly 2,000 people that are still in the federal prisons for crimes that, that they had committed when they were just children. Uh, some have been in prison longer than they've been previously out or have been alive. In Illinois general. alone, 169 juveniles per 100,000 persons are incarcerated. According to a new report by the Justice Policy Institute, locking a juvenile up costs a state average of $407.58 per juvenile per day and approximately $148,000 Per juvenile per year so it's a lot of money to lock a juvenile up for a year which is mostly the direct costs of incarceration of the juveniles direct costs meaning the funds required for operating the detention facilities the food and all the employees that you have to hire um, one study concurred that the juvenile incarceration increases a person's chances of going to jail again by 22 to 26 percent. So when a juvenile is put into prison, when they get out, they're already at a disadvantage by going to jail again by 22 to 26 percent. And when juveniles go to prison, they are very much less likely to graduate high school. And according to a 2008 analysis by a staggering 26 percent, uh, the difference between a high school graduate salary and a non-high school graduate salary is a difference of $630,000 over one person's lifetime. And that is according to uh, U.S. Labor Department of Statistics. Within the juvenile prisons, there are programs for the youth to partake in. The most popular ones are educational and vocational programs. And those of you that don't know, a vocational program is basically, um, it was brought in, brought into place in 1990, uh, and it was originally called the Perkins Act, and it was defined as uh, vocational education as an organization. Uh, it's an educational program that was offered a sequence of courses which are directly correlated to the preparation of these young individuals. Uh, in paid or unpaid employment rather than acquiring an advanced degree. So this program basically prepared them for the worst when they left the juvenile uh, system. A 2013 Ran, Ran Corp study showed that when youth prisoners uh, participate in educational or vocational programs, their ability of returning to prison decreased by 43%. That's a big percent. Uh, so obviously there's data and studies that show that educational programs decline reoffending uh, probability chances. Why are we locking these children up instead of educating them? Obviously we've seen that with them being in the vocational and educational programs, almost 50% of the probability of them, of them coming back is declined. So why are we not educating them? The average private tuition uh, elementary to high school cost is $7,863 per year. The average tuition and fees of public four-year college, so that'd be something like COD, uh, across Illinois, the average is $13,621. And the public elementary secondary school spending per student, so that would be like middle school, uh, that's $13,755. Illinois has the fifth highest average uh, in tuition and fees for a public four-year college of any state. Fortunately, the cost has remained relatively steady through the years, 
tuition and fees have risen 5% in the last five years and less than 1% in the last year. If the cost of housing a juvenile in a state youth prison costs over $148,000 per youth per year, and the average tuition and fees of a four-year public school college costs $13,600 per youth, which is the cheaper and more successful route for these troubled youth? If we're talking about money with me being a taxpayer and you being a taxpayer, if you were paying for one or the other, which one would you pay for? Would you pay for more money towards incarcerating juveniles and having no progress on their lives? Or would you pay less money for them to take part in educational programs and give the youth an attempt to take back their lives? I'll let you decide.